Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to show you how to configure and verify point-to-point -point protocol. So our first task is quite simply to enable PPP on a serial interface between two routers. And we've done some of this before in the ICND1 material. However, this time, even though our configuration steps remain the same, we're going to look at a bit more detail on the verification commands to bring a little more insight into uh, determining if PPP is functioning properly on an interface. So that's the first thing we'll do. After that, we're going to go ahead and configure authentication, and we'll do both PAP and CHAP. Now, we don't have to worry about multi-link configuration, so we won't be covering that in this tutorial. If we take a look at our lab, we have routers A and B with a single link between them. Router B is already configured to use point-to-point -point protocol, and it's already configured with PAP and CHAP authentication. So as always, if we make our configurations uh, correct on router A, we should be able to bring this connection up. Okay? Okay, let's begin by looking at serial 000 on router A. And you can see it's currently in an up-down state. And that's because our encapsulation is set to HDLC. So we might have mentioned before, both sides of a link have to be uh, configured with the same encapsulation. Otherwise, you're going to have problems like this. So router B already has PPP enabled, so we have to do the same here. So quite simply, in configuration mode, we jump into that interface, and the command is encapsulation, and then we want to choose point-to-point -point protocol. And then let's exit. Now, two things I want to point out here. First, even though we configured PPP, our interface is still in the up-down state. If we look a little bit lower, we can see we do have encapsulation PPP, which is correct. But now look at the next line, or the next bit of information here, LCP listen. So our link control protocol is trying to connect to the other side, but it's not working. Something's, something's preventing it. The reason is, router B has authentication configured, and router A does not yet have it configured. So that's why this link won't come up. So now we have to either remove the authentication from router B or enable it for router A. So we'll do that on router A, and then we're going to return to the interface command, and we'll see how the output, the LCP output, has changed once it's successfully negotiated with the other side, router B. Now, the first thing to check when you're going to configure authentication is, do both routers have a host name configured? If they don't, you have to configure one because they actually use that information uh, when their credentials are checked out on both sides. So we'll begin with CHAP authentication. And you can see router A does have a host name. Router B is just RB. So we have to create a username and password for the other router. And that username and password are both case sensitive, and the username has to be the host name of the router on the other end. So I'm on router A, the username has to be RB for router B. And then the password, we're just going to use something very simple, Cisco. Okay, that's step one. Now, after we've done that, we have to jump into the interface. And the command we want to use is PPP authentication. And you see, we have some choices here. CHAP, EAP, on the bottom we have PAP. Now the cool thing here is we can choose one, like CHAP. We can just use PAP if we wanted to. Or we can use more than one. So here, and this is what we're going to do. The router is going to first try to use CHAP. And if it succeeds, it does not try to use PAP. However, if the CHAP authentication fails, then as a backup, it'll try to use PAP. Now, we can enter this. It's okay. We don't have PAP configured yet. We'll come back and do that. So now we have CHAP enabled on our interface, and we've created a username password for router B. And we've made sure that routers A and B both have host names configured. So now, if we take a look at our serial interface, we can see that the 
uh, circuit is now up and take a look after the encapsulation PPP it says LCP open that's very important that's a great way to determine how PPP is functioning so what we get here is that this is telling us that the LCP negotiation is completed and it's done its job and it has been successful you might see something that says LCP closed that would be a bad thing that would mean that the negotiation did not successfully complete so take a look at that when you're troubleshooting now just below that is our NCP information now remember NCP the network control protocols are actually many different protocols we'll look at what we have here one of the ones we talked about in the theory tutorial on PPP was IPCP so the IP control protocol is now one of the network control protocols that is being used on this circuit and that makes sense because we want to transport IP traffic so now let's just go ahead and complete the configuration by enabling PAP as well since that's our backup authentication method we have to go back into the serial interface and we're just going to add one command and this is going to be the PPP PAP and then we have to specify a sent username so RA and then RA's password So now this is telling PPP it's going to send our username RA with the password blue to router B in order to authenticate. Now nothing's changed here because we did successfully authenticate already with CHAP. And like I said, even though we have both configured, the first one stated in our configuration command for the interface, which was CHAP will be used and if it if it doesn't uh, rather if it is successful it will not then go on and use PAP okay so the configuration tasks are actually pretty simple and there aren't too many of them when we have to enable not only PPP itself but the authentication methods okay so to summarize what we covered to change the encapsulation on a serial interface in other words to enable PPP or use HDLC we use the encapsulation command and that's an interface subcommand more importantly is the show interface command and when PPP is enabled we can see some diagnostic information or some status information on the LCP portion of PPP as well as which NCPs are enabled now when we're going to go ahead and configure authentication each router needs a host name and for CHAP we need to configure a username and password and remember this is for the far end router that's going to authenticate with us and then in interface configuration mode we issue the PPP authentication command and then we choose which one we want to use PAP or CHAP or you can use both like we did and remember if CHAP succeeds we don't move on to PAP only time the only time we would use PAP is if our CHAP authentication did fail now the extra command in order to enable PAP is also uh, in the interface and it's PPP PAP the sent username which is the router you're on that host name as well as its password and that's really what's going to be sent to the other router in order to authenticate okay so that's it that is PPP configuration not only the encapsulation but also PAP and CHAP. Thanks for watching.